Mm. Okay, hello everyone. Um, next up, we have Gofid Fuchs, who's be um, talking about issues with uh, large deployments of Debian. Hello, thanks for joining in this session. It is meant more than a experience exchange instead of a talk to where just I speak. So I just want to first introduce you to what issues we are facing in our environment. Um, I will tracking this stuff in this document. LSD stands for large scale deployments, in case you wonder. Um, so please join the Govi session. I will go through it quickly. Um, I'm working for the Austrian eHealth system. We are running the, um, the electronic health system, healthcare system in Austria. Uh, the boxes at the doctors all are running Debian. Um, there are around 12,000 boxes all across the country. And we do software updates twice a year. Um, and to be able to have the same uh, version across all the systems, we need to have them updated in the, during one night. Also because of the healthcare system is a quite critical system. So it has to be done uh, all at the same time and quickly so that people can go to the doctors the, ne the next morning without any troubles. Um, if something in this environment goes wrong, it might be a big case because you can't send out technicians to, uh, to check on 12,000 boxes across, across the country. And there's a fair amount of countermeasures that we've taken to work against these issues. One of them, the most important for us, is the rescue system. There's a special partition on the boxes, which is read-only, uh, which resets to a non-good state. It technically it downloads a bootstrap binary, runs it, and on top of that starts to do the software update again. This rescue system can be triggered manually but it is also triggered automatically if the system reboots 10 times without bringing up the application. Um, we have integration test, which does just an overall test, looking if the system is still accessible through the uh, interfaces which are exported to software uh, developers, can base the software on our software stack for, for the system and also plugging in a monitor and keyboard directly into the box or using the web interface uh, to work with the system. And all this is done with the integration test. Then there's the second step, uh, the system test, which does the tests on application layer, which checks the different applications that works on the system. And we have actually in our software development, we do three um, revisions during the release cycle. Uh, all the deeper changes are meant to be in the first step. Then the system goes to integration test and system test, and they test it. There is another revision that is done, uh, which only is allowed to contain minor changes and bug fixes. And there is a last revi revision only for bug fixes and potentially also documentation changes and things like that. Um, then when the rollout comes, comes, we first do the upgrade on the servers with respect to database changes required ones. Um, there is 
a first rollout to about 300 clients with which we have the first field test and check if there are any issues that we weren't able to reproduce in our local test environments. And a week after that, usually, there is the rest of world rollout, which uh, runs the update for all the systems across the country. Of course, there's proxy uh, proxies involved uh, or caching servers to work against bandwidth issues. When you do updates for so many boxes in one night, you have to work against this. So this is our personal uh, environment. The software update is its own package. It usually runs an update update. Then um, it triggers uh, an updated sources list, uh, which has the new version name in it. Um, does the update update, fetches the packages, or there is a two-step software update going on. The first step just updates our specific software update packages, which also has some pre- and post-processing hooks where we can uh, check uh, or work around certain limited with respect to um, config files and something like that. Um, the configuration files from the packages usually are shipped in one of our internal packages. We don't touch the Debian packages that much, but we have uh, all the packages are installed with force conf missing, force conf new, and these dpackage hooks that we know the system out there has the new configuration because it all has to work unattended, of course. Um, and after the software stack got updated, there is also a hook that might need to reboot the system. Um, and then after reboot, there is uh, the software update hooks in again and updates all the remaining packages and in the end brings up the application layer again. So this is how things work for us. And I wonder if there are people who might have um, stumbled into similar issues, have more or less similar big deployments going on and what problems others are facing in such environments. Maybe first, the first round of question, if there are any questions with respect to our specific setup and, yes, my, Thomas? My, uh, hello. One, two, three. Uh, my first question is, which kind of boxes are these? Are these the desktops uh, yeah. at the doctors, or are these some small servers that are used? Ah, OK. Um, yes, I should go into a bit more details. They are um, sort of embedded devices. There are no movable parts on it. They are directly in the doctor's office or in a hospital and in this environment there are very special limitations, regulations with respect to uh, emissions, what uh, the boxes might are allowed to take uh, with respect to power and things like that. They're embedded small devices um, and running the application stack for for the health system. So when the doctor puts in your uh, health card, it checks the authorization and then the doctor can put in the consultation information for, for the case when, for which you are there. 
So it's not desktop systems in that case, it just exports um, more or less a web interface in which you can put in the patient data and for, for, for payment uh, uh, through uh, that the doctor gets paid by the healthcare uh, insurance company. So, next. Um, exactly how do you trigger uh, the installation of the update package? Um, there's the, we do run our, each of our releases has its own version code and in, we have a software distribution server which can tell the clients which version they should update to and this software distribution tells the server uh, that all the clients there is a new version out there. There's a cron job running every day on the clients which checks if there might be a new version available and there's a maintenance uh, window in between which the clients might hook in the updates. Uh, so the central server sets the new version for the clients in, in the evening, the clients see there is a new version and they trigger the update on themselves within their respective maintenance window. There is also for, for some areas there might be, uh, uh, especially for, for bigger environments like hospitals, they have the, the possibility of manually triggering the update so it's not automatically done in the night especially with respect to emergency rooms and things like that, they need to be able to trigger it on themselves and not have it done in the night for the usual practices. And, uh, and uh, uh, is, is it means that uh, there is no user data on these devices? Um, on these devices, uh, the question was if there is data on these devices, or user, user generated data on, on the um, to some degree yes um, the boxes are also meant to be able to work in offline mode so if the central servers are not reachable the doctor practices need to be able to, uh, to do their job nevertheless so the systems can store data uh, offline and when they get the network connection again, this data will be sent to the central service. Okay, thanks. This makes it a bit, di a bit harder, but okay. So, any, any more um, questions with respect to our special environment or Mm -hmm. So how are these boxes connected uh, via a um, virtual private network and is the bandwidth limited so on the client side? Um, yes, uh, most of these parts are already covered in my talk on the Debian day. Um, they are connected either via leased lines or regular DSL lines. Um, the providers are required to run a MPLS service on it for quality assurance. There is a minimum bandwidth which has to be ensured to be able to run the update in a timely manner because this will also get tricky if the boxes just a few hundred bytes per second and the update is a bit some, sometimes a bit bigger so we really try to get the update limited quite low. Uh, yes, what I didn't mention here, what might be needed to get added is um, we strip the Debian packages from their documentation and help pages and all this stuff, manual pages, so that the packages are really narrowed down to the minimum that is really required on the boxes. 
there's no documentation stored on the boxes because um, the old boxes that we are currently in the uh, in in the work of replacing them, the old boxes just had 256 megabytes of RAM and the same amount of flash memory, so it's quite limited in that area, and that's. It's not only the bandwidth reason why we um, we strip off the demon packages from the documentation, but also the space limitations on the embedded devices. Um, the question was if we encounter problems with the network. Um, Yes and no. Um, the, the group of all the 12,000 uh, boxes when, when doing the rest of world rollout, we usually group them in several chunks with about 2,000, 3,000 boxes a chunk and trigger them at different hours over the night so that the servers uh, don't stumble into the bandwidth limit we also do some sort of simulation graphing beforehand to be able to know where there might be the bigger peaks or things like that. And afterwards, the real data also gets, uh, gets written down, noted down, and checked if our pre-calculations, if our um, tests uh, were more, more or less within the lines and that we be able to potentially uh, improve these limitations. But so far, at least within the last few releases, we managed to get things really nicely lined out. My real question is, are there any other people around here that might have that many boxes or even just thousand or something like that under their hands? Uh, when you speak about uh, upgrading, you mean upgrading your custom made application or the distribution as a whole, let's say from all stable to stable? Um, well, two or three releases ago, we did the upgrade from Sarge to Lenny. Um, if you know about the history, there was the Edge release in between. So we skipped the Edge release. We directly went from Sarge to Lenny. Um, and this also took a lot of testing during the process because there were some symbols removed and the upgrade path within Debian is ensured only for one release at a time. So we had some issues with that, but it was overdue and we do, we do the system upgrades, uh, that the complete distribution upgrades for the base system. Most of the time, uh, now that we have Lenny on the boxes, uh, contain only of improvements in, in the whole process or adding new applications and bundles along that lines, which offer better support for, for specific application enhancements. Like recently, there was added e-medication, which checks for interactions between different medication types and be able to present them to the doctor so they can uh, warn you about interactions of different medications and tell you about them. Yes, Neil? A question from IRC. Um, how do you cope with um, bandwidth requirements? Uh, do the clients have some sort of randomization for the time to start downloading the updates uh, well, within the maintenance window so they don't try and download all the same time? 
I think I read that question up myself. <laughs> How do you cope with bandwidth requirements? Um, yes, there is some randomization for the time started uh, within the parts. Uh, like I said, we split them into several chunks. So they are split out, out over the night. But within that, there is also some randomization for which goes over about, I think, 10 minutes within which the different clients can start. Sometimes the clients that run into timeouts during the updates, giving, giving some troubles, but uh, the rescue system is there to even help with those because when the application doesn't start up within a certain time, there hooks the uh, there's a watchdog that checks for the application start and if it didn't start for a certain time, the system reboots on itself. And most of the times the systems are able to heal themselves through these reboots and because other systems are not updating anymore at that time. So that works fairly well for us most of the times. They're with 12,000 boxes, they're fairly the same hardware-wise, but there are still some different charges that were done while production. So uh, in our last release, we had a timing issue with with the thing and um, a new kernel update and the watchdog hooked in too early and some of the boxes were in an endless loop here and we had to fix that but these are just some corner cases and gladly they don't appear very rarely. Yes? How do you fix these issues? So uh, when when some of the boxes have trouble, like an endless loop, or where the update simply fails, uh, do you have access, remote access to them, or do you have to basically go there? Um, our operations team has SSH access to all of the boxes. Um, when we are not able to SSH into them anymore, that's the troublesome part, but when we at least be able to SSH to them, we can log in and fix stuff. That's the easy part, even though sometimes things are still pretty tricky because the system is extremely complex. So what, when it, it became fairly complex over time, um, most of the times SSH access is possible. Sometimes in, in that case with the kernel we had to go into the client uh, distribution system and tell them to upgrade uh, to deploy an older version uh, and not the most recent version and then they went through the rescue uh, system to the older version and we were able to reach it. Sometimes it's really hardware, plain hardware breakages. The old hardware is about five years or maybe even older and it starts to wear out. So we currently are replacing the hardware nevertheless and in case some of the boxes go mad with respect to hardware, technicians have to go there and replace it. Neil, at the far back. Uh, do you see issues with the base system getting larger? Is this a problem for you? Uh, pardon? Um, is, is this a problem for you when the base system gets larger between releases? Um, yes. Um, and no, because actually now we are in the area of 
deploying new hardware, so the issue isn't there anymore. We go from 256 megabytes to 4 gigabytes of hard disk space, so that gives us a bit space for future deployments. But on the other hand, making it bigger becomes more troublesome for, for the servers, for the upgrade process. The download times don't scale up in that scale up that much, so we still have to be very careful with how much software we put out there. And sometimes we even have to make decisions like, is this bug really that important that we push out an update, or is it easier to work around it? Um, but yeah, these are decisions that has, has to be made in such an environment. Is there no one here who has also a big server farm or something like that under their hands? Yes, Neil? Well, at, um, at, at where we work, it's not Debian based, but we do have a lot of the similar problems. The company go about, we, I work for a um, set top box manufacturing company. We have a product um, at Telecom Italia, so currently about 60,000, 70,000 boxes. And that there's a lot of very similar problems with making sure things stay up to date. Um, one of the ones that we had to do was, um, one of the requirements was making sure that the hardware can't brick itself at any point in time. And so there's a, a sort of a hardware recovery thing. Um, what, what sort of mechanism do you do for the updates? Is it just HTTP? Uh, do you have a separate kernel that, that, that loads this software? Or how, how do you make sure that, that, you don't, uh, that a bug that isn't going to take the entire box down? Well, like I mentioned, there's a lot of quality assurance, system test, integration tests going on, a test rollout of the 300 golden clients and the rest of the world. Um, you never can ensure, you can take a lot of precautions, uh, be very careful, double, triple check. There's these three uh, revisions that we do internally before we, so we push out the software for the first time. And all these uh, uh, things that role during the release cycle uh, made us, at least gave us the possibilities to, to go to bed and be able to sleep. Um, so, yeah, the, the possibility of bricking systems, especially when you have to do kernel-related updates, is rather high. Like I mentioned formerly, the, the issue with the kernel timing issue was, was a bit troublesome, but we managed that very gladly, very good. And yeah, does that cover your question properly to some degree? <laughs> So, if there is no... Ah, yes, Christian. So, this is not really related to the boxes you are upgrading here, but still somehow related. Are you actually upgrading the card reader firmware too? Or just the box? Uh, no, the card reader firmware also gets upgraded from time to time. Um, especially recently, we had to uh, upgrade the certificates we were using. They were running out. And through in that process, there's also uh, card reader related upgrades going, uh, firmware upgrades going on, yes. Is this, uh, are these upgrades triggered by the box? Or they are triggered through the box, yes. 
because sometimes the card readers are in their special VPN environment locally and we can't reach them from external. And there's also some card reader proxy for, for bigger environments where they have, like in a hospital, you, you usually have at every desk there a card reader, but you have only a few main systems that are the access to the healthcare system VPN. So that's done from there. Um, one more question on IRC. Let me check it up. Which one was that? Uh, yes. Deploy updates selectively to specific clients. For example, if some of them need a slightly different package or configuration, can you explain how you do it? Well, no, there's no uh, software difference between the clients. Um, there's configuration related difference. Clients, we have one main configuration file which stores specific tuning parameters for, for our software stack, but uh, the packages that we deploy are all the same across the different clients. Um, there are different, not, not every client has the, the same set of applications. So the sources list line that is sent by the server uh, contain different components at the end for the different clients and these components guide which application the specific doctor is is allowed to use and or rather is able to use because the other applications are not uploaded to the system. But apart from that, yeah, it's done through the components in the sources list file that different software stack. We might be able to work on that system more. Currently it's just used for the applications that the doctors can use on the system. So hopefully, yes, Neil? How, how do you um, make sure that the software on the device is, is what you put there? Do, do you verify the kernels or check the file system or, or how do you sort of really verify that it hasn't been tampered with in any way? Well, um, the local administrators might have, uh, they only have access to a specific dialogue based administration menu, menu through which they can change just a very limited set of settings like network settings or which card readers are connected to the device. But apart from that, no one locally has access to the system. About being tampered with, we do rely on apt key, just like regular DBM parts. Um, so there's no additional layer that we put on top of that. Um, we can remotely log in and check things. Um, there's also some sort of, uh, we have a specific software that is able to do some checks on, on, on the whole tree uh, of clients if we need to find out whether how much uh, bandwidth was used in the last update from the clients. We can hook in some scripts that get uploaded to the systems and give us this data, um, which might be used. It, it's sort of called health check to, to be able to check the health of the system. There's no regular RRD tool or something like that running on the boxes. Um, but 
if we need the some some specific information for whether there might be had been some problems with the last software update or that we can extract the logs and and check them so the next talk that is going here more or less goes in the same direction and I hope there will be more people around that work in different, uh, in similar environments and also have bigger amounts of machines under their hands and speak up about the issues they are facing. So if you know someone who works in such an environment, please tell them to get in contact with me. I would like to discuss troubles they are seeing with using Debian in such environments. And in case, yeah, please get in contact with me. Um, I hope you all know how to do that. Um, so thanks for being here. Thanks for your questions. I hope I have answered all your curiosities and see you later. <laughs>